And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. The MPP election committee was forced on Monday to adjourn balloting for positions for presidential aspirants after nine of them boycotted the process, raising objections with integrity of the election procedure itself. After more than three hours of an urgent meeting today, the issues were resolved. And in the last hour, the balloting has taken place and we have clarity on which aspirant takes what spot on the ballot paper. Now, for the Super Delegates Conference, to whittle down the numbers to five, there are ten of them we know. Uh, Samuel Mbura is with me in the studio. He's been there for us at the MPP headquarters. So who got what spot today? Well, Evans, uh, number one is Kennedy of Japan. They are since Central MP, Alan Chamantin, former Trade and Industry Minister, Joe Gatti, former Railway and Development Minister, Mr. Kojopoku, Energy Expert, Dr. Fria Koto, former Agric Minister, Kobina Eji of Japan, former General Secretary of the NPP, Adai Nimo, former MP for Mampon, Dr. Kofi Konendu Apreku, uh, Boache Ejako, former Energy Minister, and the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, on number 10 in the ballots. So let's go through the numbers. So one is Kennedy Japan, so he is at the top, followed by Alan Chemanting in second place. Third on the ballot is Joe Gatte. Uh, and fourth is Mr. Kujopoku, who is the uh, energy analyst. Uh, five on the ballot is Dr. Fria Koto, the uh, former Greek minister. Six on the ballot is Kwabunai J. Japan, former general secretary of the party. Uh, seven on the ballot is uh, Adai Nimo. Eighth on the ballot is Dr. Kofi Konedo Apreku, who is a former uh, uh, minister under the uh, Kufu administration responsible for regional integration. Mm. Uh, ninth on the ballot is Mr. Chairman Tingi Jako, who is a former uh, energy minister. And then on the bottom, in the 10th yeah. place, yeah. is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is a vice president. And we know in times past, we have uh, reactions to this with many of these aspirants now beginning to read all manner of spiritual and religious and sometimes placing uh, all manner of uh, meanings uh, into the various numbers uh, as, as they place on this ballot paper. But we know that there were significant issues going into today. In fact, the election committee was forced to boycott the balloting on Monday after nine of the aspirants, with the exception of Dr. Bamia, raised serious objections. How did they resolve this? Well, the spokesperson for the elections committee, Alexander Fayo Markins, uh, said that the engagement was able to build consensus on the nagging issues and incorporated the same in the guidelines. They have also agreed that the Electoral Commission will take charge of the elections, each candidate will appoint an agent to oversee the printing of the ballot papers, which will be done by the Electoral Commission. One other controversial issue, which has to do with proxy voting, has also been resolved. And this list of proxy and election album will be made available to the aspirants from tomorrow. So initially there were challenges with the proxy votes, but uh, Mr. Fia Markin says that issue has been resolved. I'm happy to announce that we've had a very successful engagement with eight of the aspirants were present. Two were represented. Vice President Bahamadu ba Baumia was represented, and then Dr. Kofi Konedu Apreku was also represented. But the, yeah, I think seven, Honorable Jogati was also represented. So we had seven out of the ten aspirants present. And uh, we had our engagement and uh, we deliberated on few matters that were of concern. We were able to build consensus on the nagging issues and incorporated same in the guidelines. We've agreed that the Electoral Commission is going to take charge of the elections and see to all the security arrangements as well. Party agent, uh, uh, agent of the aspirant will also uh, oversee to the printing of the ballot papers. So the ballot papers won't be printed by the party. It will be printed by the electoral commission. And all that we would do is to furnish them with the details of the aspirant, including their pictures. We've given them the type of picture they are supposed to bring. So everything has been agreed upon. The notice of polls will be put out. A proxy has been agreed upon. There's going to be proxy. And the notice will be issued. And deadline for all proxies will be by on the 2nd. 
and all proxy lists will be furnished the aspirants. We also agreed to ensure that the, the list of delegates, the album in this case, will also be furnished the aspirants. Uh, and Samuel, what about the aspirants themselves? Some of them were there in person. Exactly. So seven of them were there in person. Joe Gatti was represented by his um, representative. We also had uh, Dr. Cornelio Apriku having someone uh, to uh, represent him. But the seven um, that I spoke to, I, I managed to speak to three of them because uh, the rest said they wouldn't comment on it. First was Alan Chairman, the former trades and industry minister. He says that they are expecting that the election process would be free and fair for them. His, um, the, the views of um, uh, Mr. Daini Mo and that of Kobine Japan were not different from uh, Mr. Alan Chairman. Everything went well. Now we've settled on the procedures and the processes for the uh, primaries for the elections and uh, we hope that we can be guaranteed a fair, transparent election so that we can work towards breaking the eight. I think everything went well. Um, we just want to have a very sanitized election. And the Electoral Commission is in control of the process and everything is going well. Can I think we have the photo album yet? Uh, not yet, but they've told us that we can come and receive it from tomorrow. It's available. We will bring our pen drives, we can pick it. So Are you satisfied with the engagement with the elections committee? Very, very satisfied. Yeah. What was your number on the ballot? On number the six. Number six. What does that mean to you? It means I'm going to win. We discussed the voting period, the voting time, which is prescribed, and voting designated centers in all the 16 regions. Are you satisfied with the engagement with the elections committee? Oh, sure. We are. We are. So... Um, we are looking for free, fair, transparent process. At, at what was your number on the ballot? Well, I picked number seven. What does that mean to you? Well, what, what is it? I mean, picking a number on the ballot paper doesn't mean anything. Let's speak now to the former tourism, arts and culture minister, Catherine Afeku, who speaks for the Alan Chamanting camp. She joins us on the line right now. Shortly, we'll be talking to um, Nana Komiya, who speaks for the uh, Dr. Baumia. I'm coming getting other reactions to what we've seen uh, today, but substantively also the fact that there was a, a meeting that trashed out some of the concerns that the aspirants had raised. Uh, Madam Catherine Afeku, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Yes, thanks for having me, Evans. It's good to hear from you as well. Number two on the ballot paper. Happy with that? Too sure. That's the refrain from the campaign office. We are elated. And we are also very, very happy that the fellow contestants were on the same wavelength. Transparency, transparency, and fairness. Yes, Evans, I think the party has come this far. Knowing the new patriotic party, uh, the credentials of free, fair, electoral process is our hallmark so we are expect nothing less we're happy our candidate was there but he had uh, stopped the campaign to be there in person to ensure that the balloting had his imprint and for us at the campaign headquarters our refrain and our rebranding is too sure it is numerology and a spiritual and the whole universe is saying you are next in line to lead you know the history of our party, and you know the credentials of Honorable Alan Kwejo Chomatin. In 2007, he was number two. In 2010, he was number two. The delegate said, please wait for President Akufuado. When he's done with his tenure, it will be your turn. In 2014, it was the same message. Wait Mr. Alan Kwadrich Mantin, when His Excellency President Nakufado is done with his tenure, it will be your turn. So this balloting has a lot of spiritual connotation for those of us who are following the gentleman who's ready and next to lead. So it, it, is, it is a done deal for us. And by the grace of God, he's next to lead because he is number two after Akufado. It is him. Interesting analysis and spin on the number two. But some will also say number two could also mean second place, second fiddle. 
Well, you know, the argument is if number one is someone who has been in the race since 1998, then you will have to wait your turn. But everybody in our party from 92, even those from 69, know the history that President Akufo-Addo Excellency has always had this friendly contest with Alan Kwajucha Martin. And everybody in the party was also told that wait your turn Mr. Chamatin, when president is done, it will be you. So for us in the campaign headquarters, our excellency retires December 2024. The baton will shift to the one who has always been second to him, not to any other person. But he's ready in the spiritual realm to be the next to lead. Number two means you're going to one. And President Nakofad is not in the race. If you look at the caliber of people who are very, very astute, very ready, proper, all of them deserve. But the person who's next to lead has been affirmed and confirmed by the balloting. And we'll, we'll come up after the, uh, you know, positions, etc. Today I had Alan Chamanting and we just played a sound, emphasize on transparency, free and fair elections. Why is that so important to him? I almost get a sense that, uh, that the, he may be harboring fears that the process may not be as transparent and free and fair going forward? It's, it's a very natural feeling when you have an election with 891 people and it's spread across 16 regions. Uh, elections are won at the ground. And you have 10 contestants. They would have loved to meet all these delegates and share their message, even if it's two minutes. Those of us who have been through elections before they cast the ballot. You, as a contestant, you are given the opportunity to say something. And, uh, you know, it was the, the love and belief of the nine contestants that if they had their wish. But NEC is a supreme decision-making body of the party. And they had their way. They think we have to follow precedent. So we have to be law-abiding citizens and follow the dictates of the party. But in fairness, the party people would have loved to have it in one central location as we're doing with our cluster of meeting people so they get to fraternize and also listen to the messages of the future leaders of our party that is not to be that doesn't take anything away from our wish and desire to take over the baton but the the message is clear this Exercise must be transparent, it must be fair, and there should be no foul play. Also, we need to emphasize that it's only an administrative process. We're going to prune the 10 and get 5. The real election is November 4th. I mean, so for, for, we are for party, elated I, that our, our candidate is number 2 on this uh, ballot, and he will be part of the fight. I mean, for we are not really bothered with the exercise of August 26th. Yeah. We are focusing on November 4th. I mean, for a party like the MPP that prides itself on democracy and, and, and holding on the tenets of free and fair elections, and you've done so many of those internal elections, shouldn't it be the case that having a free and fair elections is a giving? That you, I mean, I, I, I'm surprised that you're asking for it. Shouldn't it be a giving? Shouldn't it be something you take for granted? No, Evans, these are genuine concerns. No election is the same. If it happened in 98 and it was free and fair, it could change. And things do change. You know, these ballots going to be printed will have serial numbers. And people have been victimized when they did it in a decentralized manner. You could easily trace that if you have an MP and an uh, uh, chairman voting in one region, it's easy for you to know who voted for. You can guesstimate. So people wanted to avoid these victimization and tagging people that they voted for candidate A or candidate B. So in order to avoid those unnecessary stress and victimization of party members, it would have been best to have all of us in one room, the contenders speak, and then people queue and vote. So it will be difficult for you to say uh, in Ashanti region, these four people voted against candidate A or candidate B. That is what people were worried about. But nevertheless, it is, it is a right of every contender, every contestant to ask the election machinery and those in charge, the supervisory agents manning the election to ensure free, fair election. And it's part of the story and rhetoric we say in every election 
but we we need this to be sanctified so nobody walks away feeling cheated or feeling uh not not being given the the fairness of this exercise uh, madam catherine africa please stay with me uh, let me bring in dr kabiru mahama uh, he is a spokesperson uh, for the baumia campaign team uh, dr mahama thanks for your time here on top story bottom spot for dr baumia badoman so thank you very much, and then good evening to you, Evans, and to your cherished listeners. Uh, balloting is a random exercise of pleasing candidates. And when you have such a random exercise and you are candidate, it being placed at number 10 at the bottom. It carries good omen. Good omen that aligns very much with the message of Dr. Baumia. Whenever he goes around, he says that they must be a striker. A striker who will score the goal for the SDP. The major goal is to win and break the eight. And that message has been carried through all the constituencies he has visited. And to be placed at number 10, a number that Messi wears, a number that Maradona wears, a number that Abedi Pele wears, a number that Zidane wears. You can just say that that is the chosen person in order to carry us to that particular place. That aside, at the bottom, it means that he is a leader who is going to carry the rest of the candidates. And we will need to forge ahead at one party in unity to bring them in, carrying them along. As the one at the bottom means that you require someone who has patience, someone who has understanding, someone who can do do this at the end of the content. The vice, the vice president number 10 signifies that. At the bottom, we are very much aware that it is easier. I mean, President Kufo Asenho campaign was what we used to win the election. So the vice president being at number 10, for us, we couldn't have asked for a better placement of balloting than this number. And we are very much okay. We are happy with the number being chosen. We are happy with the selection. And we just want to say that it carries good me. It's a good message for us that it aligns very well with the message the vice president has been preaching, whatever he visits or whichever constituency he visits. Yeah, I mean, you, you use the phrase, he's carrying everybody along, but also it could end up at the end of the day, carrying everybody, literally meaning he's really at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, maybe it could. It, it, I mean, you may, you may, you may suggest that, but I'm um, saying history of our party of people being placed at ten. I mean, at the the bottom has never been someone who come at the last in uh, at the end of the day. So, but w- apart from the omen, the spiritual, the hypothesis being said against those numbers, we are also of the view that these are scientific. I mean, the election is going to be a scientific process. The data and science does not suggest that if there's any person who is going to come at the bottom, it's not Dr. Baumia. If there's anyone who is going to be placed in second position, it's not Dr. Baumia. There's only one place for Dr. Baumia, and that's the first spot. And that's the one where you speak to the data. But when you are looking at the numbers, trying to read meaning, the omen of these numbers, it also suggests one other conviction. That is, Baumia is going to carry the day, he's going to carry the rest of the candidate to the pool, he's going to be the striker, the lead person to score the goal for the NPC at the end of the, I mean, the election in 2024. On Monday, about the same balloting, nine of the aspirants came together, raised objections, forced the election committee to adjourn the balloting. In fact, there were suggestions that it had been boycotted. And do you feel ganged up against? You, you see, I, uh, we, would, we, would, we would probably exercise caution in trying to say that we've been against a gaze. However, the president believes in party processes, that we have absolute faith in the party doing the right thing. The same machinery won as the election in 2008, I mean 2016, that won as the election in 2024. The party machinery is still intact. We believe that at the end of the day, whatever the party decides, whatever next, National Council decide is good for the party. So the vice president never got himself involved in this whole process because he has absolute faith that, look, we cannot destroy the machinery that is going to send us the election. The movement will begin to cut in, uh, I mean, uh, in, in nation, to, to cut class on the integrity of the machinery that is going to send into the election. We will be hitting ourselves at the wrong side. So the vice president stayed away from that particular drama because he believes that party unity is important and that we must always do consensus. At the end of the day, the party took a decision on the balloting. Before that, there was a decision being taken about the fact that, I mean, the register, all those decisions are aligned with the party aspiration. So we do not want to feel like we have been done. By, 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 by your critics, by your critics suggest that you stood alone when the other nine raised questions because, you know, as has been alleged, that the party machinery, the election machinery, the executives are all marshalling 
the tools and the entire process is being coerced so it can deliver victory for you. You see, when you go to critical decisions like NEC, at National Executive Council meeting, at National Function, I mean, National Executive Committee meeting, individual positions do not matter. It is the collective decision. So when the issues were put to vote, for instance, you saw that overwhelming majority of the people were on the hours on one side, while some nine people were on the other side. But even if the vice president had added himself to the nine people, that would still turn against the whole machinery of the party. So it is only prudent that the vice president aligns himself with what the majority of the people of the MPP believe in. And so to decide not to take part in the decision of the nine people was to just say that, look, I am with the people, I stand by what the people say, and their representatives at this meeting have stated that they want the election to be carried out in this manner. So I allow very much. So the vice president was not deserting them. He was only listening to what the people say and aligning himself to what the people want. And a leader, that is what he should be doing. You have to be a listening leader. I mean, Catherine Afeko, so today you received assurances from what I heard earlier from Alan Chamanting and the others. It's safe to assume, yes. safe to assume that you're happy with the assurances you got and now you have full faith that the process will be free and fair. Yes, Evans, but before we get there, I, I don't think uh, Mr. Kadero is being fair to the nine contestants because what they express is not drama. But that's just by the way. These are real concerns of contenders in a race for the leadership of our party. Nevertheless, the, the neck listened and a general consensus has been reached and we are all going to agree to the decentralized process, but it is not drama. Yes, we are very, very grateful and our concerns have been listened to, but elections, nevertheless, regardless of where it's been held, as a contestant in a race and as a participant, you have every right to express your views that it must be free, it must be fair, and there must be transparency. I mean, Those Catherine, are the rights Ca of Catherine, a dread, a contestant. A dread question. So, have you ganged up against Dr. Baumia? I don't think so. Um, when people are in a race, they are in it to emerge as leaders. So there is no such word as ganging up. But when nine people think of the same way, I would have wished Nick would have given them a consensus that they would have listened. That's why we have democracy, there's majority and minority. But nevertheless, it came out and the perception looked as if nine people spoke, but our party felt it wasn't listened to. So it, it has nothing to do with ganging up. Their views just converged and they had legitimate concerns. So nine people didn't meet anywhere. They came out on their own volition individually and they had a concern that was equally on the same level. So it is not ganging up. They are matured leadership potential people who can become president of this nation. So they have their own mind and they have their own decision to make. It just converged because their concerns were equally same. They were concerned about the decentralized approach to this election. I don't think that's ganging up Evans. That is just matured people expressing their views on how an election process should be conducted. And it is not drama. I mean, Kabir, you, you accept that, you know, that description may not be accurate in describing the position expressed by the nine? Okay, if you can come again. Please. I mean, you accept the description of drama may yeah, not be I accurate mean, I, in describing. I, I the vice president did not want to engage in drama, not in reference to that specific answer, because the, the view is that the vice president left them alone in the process. But I'm, 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 I'll be surprised that if the people, the nine think that the vice president should not have a man of his own. So when the vice president decides that he wants to stand alone on a position, I mean, without fear of what the majority of the contestant would think, it is, it, is, it, it is not about being left or leaving them alone or to their fate. That is one thing. I mean, if the use of the word drama is to water down the concerns of the people, I would think that I will always have to revoke that. But uh, I just wanted to make the point that the vice president is a man of his own. He has his own opinion on the issue. The fact that some nine people are standing on one side do not mean that or doesn't mean that he should be pulled to that position. Two, the vice president believes that a party is there. The party is basing their decision on sound judgment. The party is going to base the decision based on rational decision-making process. So at the end of the day, if any concerns are raised, he expects those concerns to be discussed. And those people who were at the meeting would tell you that all the issues were exhaustively discussed. 
they were, I mean, in fact, not even by a simple majority, the absolute majority of the people thought that, look, the party processes as they were, as they command, should be, I mean, should be continued to the latter. So I think that this is where the matter should rest. And I'm happy that the other, and they are agreeing that, look, they have faith in the party. They believe that the party will carry on the processes, despite the fact that initial concerns have not been addressed. Nonetheless, I believe that, I sincerely believe that, Mr. Evans, that these people are men of substance. They know what they are doing. And when they raise concerns, the concerns could have some iota, could have some bits and pieces of proof, and that they want the process to be fair. We all want a free and fair election. The Dr. Mahoba, we don't want to win an election. That is mal with scandal. That is going to be mal with what the deficiencies. Because he'll be, electing, he'll be elected to represent the MPP. He doesn't want anyone to feel like the pro process was not followed because he needs everyone to come on board for us to win the 2024 election. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kabiru Mahama, uh, one of the uh, a spokesperson uh, for the Baumia campaign team, and uh, Catherine Afeku as well, who speaks for the uh, Alan Chamantain campaign team. Uh, thank you, uh, gentlemen and lady. I want to bring in quickly the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP, Haruna Mohamed, uh, who joins us right now. Uh, Mr. Mohamed, um, I understand this meeting laid out what the entire process will be going into the superdelegates uh, elections on the 26th of August. What did you tell them? What What is the agreement as far as the modalities are concerned? This is what they've been asking for. Um, thank you very much, Ivan. Uh, unfortunately, um, the party set up the elections committee and uh, the election committee spokesperson uh, is the deputy majority leader and uh, the secretariat, that is the general secretary secretariat, uh, was presented in the committee by the director of finance and administration. I have received briefings from uh, the committee, and what I get to understand is that we had a very good and fruitful discussion among top leadership of our party. These are very gentlemen who have the party at heart, uh, who wants to lead the party for us to have a historic victory in 2024. And I believe that all the agreements that have been reached is what we are going to follow. The next step for us after this ballot uh, is for us to have the publication of the first notice of poll. And uh, Tuesday, that was yesterday, was the day that we have, we have been doing the notice of poll. Uh, having had the balloting today, uh, by close of tomorrow, uh, I believe that the, the, the notice of poll will be put and uh, aspirants will move the, into the fold to canvas for support. I would also want to take this opportunity to thank all the 10 aspirants for that exhibition of maturity and thinking of this party first. And for us to come out today, all of us were laughing and the media persons were there. And I believe that uh, we are better fostering and also putting force to the multi-party democracy and also internal democratic management. I think that the MPP is the winner. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohamed. He is the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. Uh, if you're listening to us tonight, you've seen and heard about the balloting. What's your take? 055 11 11 Newsnight.